So in today's exciting video, we're talking about larva containers, uh, specifically why I farm larva in uh, these gray buff bins. And I mean, I've seen um, some other setups recently that use these really big uh, 27 gallon storage totes. And I find that to be really inefficient and um, for me, I'm trying to be very conscientious about product quality and several product, several products at that through the whole process, process. And just as like being very conscientious of odors and uh, excess liquids and stuff like that, um, because it can make it a really unenjoyable process. Um, if you have like a really strong odor, um, it's just messier and it's um, it's just not it's not as enjoyable we'll say that so this is just a standard restaurant bus bin um, I think I bought a whole mess of them on a restaurant supply website a few years ago and they're not brand new but they are as good as new um, super durable I can stack these and store them away. Um, I can also stack them uh, in a pinch if I need to shuffle stuff around off some shelves onto another shelf. It's easy enough to do like five or six of these. Um, just don't let them fall. It is the worst game of Jenga ever. Um, easy to hold, easy to move around. There's some nice big hand grips here. Um, I also really like being able to make notes with a sharpie so it's a permanent marker I write down any notes I need to make about the age of the bin you know these hatched on August 1st uh, and then I divided them a couple times and I made notes of that so uh, in each subsequent bin like this would get divided into let's say these two bins I would make notes on that and this bin would carry the same notes. It would just add today's date to it and what I did. So, um, the, the best feature I think these have, it's depth to surface area. So with this, I would not, larva should not be deeper than four inches. Um, once it gets more, more dense, um, the conditions of the bin get less and less uh, good, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Um, it gets it gets pretty pretty rank kind of fast. Um, so some of the drawbacks that I have seen with uh, with the setups with the use, that use the big uh, 27 gallon totes, uh, the footprint of this, I could not easily shift. This, there's only really one good space that you could do this, and that's outside. Um, if you if you stack these, I don't I don't know what kind of shelves you would need to stack them. Um, there's also an issue with surface area. So there is a lot of surface area here, but because they can't be real deep, the walls really inhibit the air flow coming through, keeping everything aerobic and healthy and hospitable. So um, another detail to be very con conscientious of is moisture. So airflow is important to keep moisture down, to keep everything aerobic, like I said. That is a difficult thing to achieve when the walls are so tall and the air can't quite flow and take out that excess moisture. And I I'm very dubious of any drainage hole situation you could try. Um, I've not met a larva yet that hasn't tried to crawl through a hole if it found one. And then if one crawls, they all crawl. And then you have larvae everywhere. And I have, I've swept up enough larvae in my life. I know I have several more pounds to go. Um, I would just like to keep that those situations few and far between. We'll say that. Um, which is also another good point to make. If this is wet 
if the contents of this is wet, the larva will escape. And I don't know if any of you have heard the slow drip, drip, drop of uh, larva hitting the floor, but um, it's very specific and um, <laughs> can, can really send you into a tizzy. So also something to be very conscientious of. Um, the weight of this thing is something else I can't even imagine dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. So unless you are very careful about making sure your feedstock is more on the dry side, um, unless you are very conscientious of sifting this frequently and keeping the material low uh, and making sure it's no more than four inches deep in here, Odds are, if you have something this big and you've seen other quick video setups where you just dump the food and, you know, larva, yes, it, it does, you can do that. But it does get to a point where this fills up, the larva start turning into pre-pupa, and then you don't know what to do. And I kind of feel like that's why a lot of you watch my videos. So... This is a really difficult situation to deal with when it gets out of hand, when it gets funky, when it gets heavy. Um, you can compost it if you have a compost setup. You can certainly do that. Mix a lot of wood chips in and the odor will go down in a day or so. You can do that. Um, but lifting this sucker is just it, an unfun task. Um, I even had a bin like this uh, poured into one of these yesterday just to like experiment with it and it was so hard to dump <laughs> and they weren't they weren't they weren't wet they weren't gloppy they weren't they were free flowing and they were not free flowing um, so it's just super cumbersome to have a situation like this and also I have to be very careful of maintaining my footprint all year round because if I stray too far from the confines of my insulated room when the temperature drops and we start getting winter weather I don't want to be scrambling and figuring out what do I do with all these bins because right now I'm feeding 80 of these and I'm pretty comfortable and confident with the footprint I have right now that I can I can manage that comfortably I cannot ma I can't imagine uh, managing that many larvae in this kind of vessel. Um, I think it just it doesn't work out real well. Um, yeah, I, I strongly advise against this um, if you want to do a lot of larvae. Um, yeah, so these guys in here, these are they're ready to be divided honestly so I could sift this material and like you can see it's it's a really nice consistency for sifting I, I should sift this right now um, but I would sift this I would divide it and I would just get them set up in the shelves in the larva room and just keep feeding them until they get uh, about to the four inch mark in here again so yeah, the weight um, also in this will uh, quickly accumulate. A container like this, um, these two vessels hold the same volume, about five pounds. So when this is full of larva and residue and frass, it weighs about 25 pounds, which is easy to manage. You've got the nice handholds. Um, the um, the 27 gallon container though, even if it's half full, you know, you're looking at 70 pounds at least. And you know, if you are a tough beefcake, good, you need to be uh, if, if this is the route you take. Um, I am neither beefcake or tough. I'm kind of tough. I'm not super tough. I'm a little tough. Anyway, I digress. So, um, 
weight is also a really important thing to be uh, conscientious of. Um, yeah, if you want a strong back, this is the way to go. If you don't, do this. Uh, and then kind of along the same um, lines with with the five gallon bucket. So this is um, definitely a way to start. Um, I don't think it's a good long-term solution if you want to grow your colony. It's just a, the surface area to depth ratio is not great. It's not ideal. You couldn't really get that. You might get a third of the volume that's in this into this bucket and then you're missing out on like right now the breeze is blowing it would never reach down in here right now it's reaching right across here um, same situation here the breeze that's coming through it's it's never reaching below like six inches in this container so moving the air is really important um, making sure this stays aerobic is really important um, I tempt this bin and it's a hundred degrees. That's a little warm. So if you have a container like this and it's a hundred degrees um, or more, you're going to have a really uncomfortable situation for your larva and for you to deal with too. Um, what will happen is on the bottom, they will suffocate, they will cook kind of. And um, it just it adds to more of a unfun situation to deal with. So if you're really trying to maximize your efficiency and also um, you know, your yield, you need to make sure they're comfortable at you know every stage. So this is the best way to do that. Um, I found. It's, I, I have experienced the crushed and suffocated larva and it's, it's not, it's not a great, it's not a great feeling. Um, it's, <laughs> it's a mess to clean up and you, you missed out on, on that, on that, um, that resource there that you've been trying to develop this whole time. So, um, so I covered, um, temperature, um, moisture sweeping larva off the floor um so yeah um thank you again for watching and uh keep it circular never forget to do that and uh, i'll see you next time